Okay, hello people. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to render wireframe with Maya Elementary. And this, there are two parts to this tutorial. The first part is just for all of you guys who are impatient and just wants to get us over with. And the second part is I'm going to go into the options a little bit to show you how to make it smoother and nicer wireframes. So they are going to look like look nice basically. <laughs> okay, let's dig in. Open up the hypershade, <sighs> and then uh, I am usually using Lambert. You can use a uh, surface shader, and inside the color attribute over there, insert a ambient occlusion pass, and then crank up the settings on the ambient occlusion uh, to make it look nice. Of course, that is going to make the render a lot slower, and this Lambert is going to make renders nice and fast, and that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, with this Lambert, I am going to go with white color and incandescence a little bit like that. It's going to be nice. And also with this material selected, go into the input output connections and select this shading group because that is an important part of this whole thing. And inside this, if you don't have this open up, you go into the mental array and contours and basically enable contour rendering. And here you can choose the color of your wireframes. I'm going to choose black, and this width part is the thickness of your wireframes. Now keep in mind, this um, enable contour rendering is only for this material. Uh, you also need to do this on a global scale, so go to the render settings over there, and under the features tab, while using Manta Ray, you go down over here to contours, expand that, and enable that as well. And that's basically it. You also need one more thing though. Uh, draw by property difference, expand that as well. These are the different options you can have and depending on what you select your wireframe is going to look different. Basically how you want your wireframe to look like and what you're going to be needing is around all polyfaces. It's basically it. You can use around the silhouette as well. It can help, it, don't, it doesn't hurt anything. You can check that as well. But in most cases it doesn't really help me at least. Uh, maybe some rare cases. It doesn't hurt, so at least check that as well. And that's all you need to do. Inside this shading group, select this, uh, enable this contour rendering, select color and thickness, and this in the global settings, global settings, enable contour rendering. And with that, let's render and see how it looks like. <coughs> there you go. This is wireframes. Uh, the lines are a bit thick, so I'm gonna change it to 0.8, and that's it. So all you patient people, go away, <laughs> and now I can talk about the options in peace. Uh, you can of course stick around if you want to learn about that as well. So as you can see, these lines are a bit jagged, it's not aliased or anything like that. Uh, basically it's ugly. The first thing I need to do, uh, I'm going to do is change the background of the environment from a camera. So with gray so you can see these wireframes over here a little bit better. And there you go. And with that I can close that and open up the render settings, global render settings. And what you need to know is this oversample and filter type. Uh, basically the higher the number, the smoother the lines and this, you know, and the same thing with the this filter type. I'm going to choose triangle and you can have of course 5, 8, whatever number you need for your particular case. In my case here it, this works just perfect. For instance if I just uh, save this image I can re-render and then we can compare with these new settings. As you can see they are a lot smoother than the past ones. So yeah, a lot more nicer. If you want to render triangles, for instance, uh, if you, whatever, if you ever need that, the only thing you need to do is just check this render tessellation, and if I also save this image and re-render, and that's it. You can render triangles. So if you ever need that, is around uh, around the render tessellation, and that's it. And sometimes, if you have uh, objects in a weird position or particular position as you can actually see here a little bit over here 
if you can see that this edge is not connected in some cases you can it helps by just changing the camera angle and stuff like that and hope that it fixes itself in this case it did if you have more complicated scenes or objects that are in such a weird position that it doesn't help sometimes uh, enabling this around coplanar faces can help but keep in mind it also will render coplanar faces and if you don't know what that is basically this is a flat face if you go to the vertex mode and choose one vertex and put it up now it's coplanar and th this and this face is planar this is coplanar so basically if you check these options over here it's going to render this edge between here so let's see how that looks like and as you can see perfect exactly what you think it will do I'm going to demonstrate this option though uh, a little bit better what I mean that certain fa faces or certain edges aren't rendered if you have them in weird positions I have one scene um, over there don't save this don't need to now this is a personal project first of all I'm going to zoom out way out go to the hyper shade and yeah I need to create a Lambert and then I want to select all of these and assign this to everything change this and that and go to the shading group and enable over here black and 0.6 is perfect for me in this case and let's see go over here and choose menthol ray features taking a little while when you click on features and go to contours and enable that as well now I am going to go with a little bit better quality as well also what you need what you may need to do to get better quality sometimes it helps by actually go to quality tab and the preset choosing uh, production and stuff it will also increase the quality of the lines and everything and the quality of your objects as well so uh, the lines I'm not sure but at least the objects <laughs> basically it will help it but also uh, the render times is going to be a lot bigger okay so basically what you see here these uh, edges over here you can clearly see them over here but when I render over there they are not going to be visible uh, because nothing is visible <laughs> okay I forgot to check some boxes uh, come on this one over here I want this and as you can see they are not rendered whatsoever uh, uh, because they are actually obscured by the other objects or something like that I'm gonna try silhouette I'm not sure it's gonna help no not in this case and as you can see it it didn't do anything it's exactly the same however if I check this uh, coplanar face and re-render now they are rendered but the background the mountain over here because it's a mountain it has a lot of coplanar faces so it's going to render them as well and these at least got rendered, got rendered as well so maybe you just go to post uh, post processing and remove this mountain with this one if you if you want that whatever but just keep in mind that certain scenes certain um, complicated positions of objects may cause a problem and so you may need to play around with these settings to get a better result and then basically merge some images together in post processing and stuff like that and uh, that's it that's uh, all you need to know about basically all you need to know about this uh, wireframe rendering it's very easy very fast which is which I like there are certain other types you can render wireframe with uh, for instance uh, Maya vector which is <laughs> very complicated and it doesn't even work as well um, then there is uh, you just take a screenshot of your UVs <laughs> save this file into a file and then apply it to a material you can use tune render there's tons of different ways you can render wireframe however this is a very fast and kind of reliable way to render wireframes so 
that's it. I hope you like that and uh, have a good day.